All right, in order for us to get started, I wanted to quickly establish exactly where the mouth fits on the face from a front and side profile. I've got my face divided into four equal parts. I've got my forehead here, my eyebrows here, my nose, and my chin. Obviously the top of the head comes up just a little bit more. I've got that just about half distance from the regular, these are all equal distance here. And then my mouth is gonna be half distance between my nose and my chin. I generally go just a little higher than half though, and I find that works for me because I like to have a fairly large chin. So that's gonna put my line just right about here. And that means that my jaw is just a little bit lower than my mouth. But really you could actually make the mouth exactly even and you could have the jaw line up with it exactly. Because all of our faces are different, there really is no hard and fast rule. But for a good standard symmetrical superhero head, this really works. I'm gonna go ahead and draw that line through this face too. And so my mouth is gonna be just a about there. So my mouth is going to take up this area, but we need to establish exactly where along this line it goes. And so my eyes, I generally have an eye space between my eyes and then an eye space on the outside of my eyes. I don't know if I'm perfect there, but it's pretty close. And that's the way that I measure my eyes onto the head. We covered that on a, a previous video, probably a few of them really, but just to make that clear again, that's, that's how we line those up. The nose lines up between the eyes just like that. And so my mouth is gonna line up directly down from the center of my eye. And so that's gonna be the place where my mouth sits. And so in really, really simple terms, it's just gonna be here. I'm just gonna draw it just quickly as a line. On the side view, my mouth is gonna come directly to the center of the eye again. And so again, I'm just gonna draw a simple line just like this. But obviously our mouth isn't a simple line, so this can really only take us so far. But it's important to know exactly where to place it on the head from a front and profile view. So from here, I think the next most important thing to say about the mouth, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a cylinder. I'm kind of looking down at the cylinder because a cylinder directly from the side it doesn't look like a cylinder. So here is my cylinder. This is gonna be my top, obviously my bottom. And if I were to draw a mouth on a face, the mouth would curve around the cylinder. It's important to know that the mouth curves around the face and doesn't just sit along the flat plane. So with that in mind, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of skull constructions just to get a general sense of how to establish that mouth on a head. And we'll go with a couple of different angles. I'm gonna start with an angle kind of looking up at the head. My brow line is gonna be here. My nose line is gonna be here. My chin here and my forehead will be here. Because I'm looking at it at an angle, if I was drawing a box, that box would be like, this. And so I know that my front lines are going like this, but just like my cylinder, they're curving around because my head isn't flat. And along the side, my lines are going to go like this. And I can make these actually more flat because the side of the head is more flat than the front. I'm going to go ahead and draw my profile in my center line of the side, my ear, and my ear connects at a bit of an angle. It doesn't go right along this line flat. It actually angles slightly back. And so that's a really basic head construction. But what I like to do is use essentially a skull construction. And this is really helpful with the placement of eyes, uh, drawing the cavities that eyes fit in, just like this. I'm gonna draw the place where my nose projects out if, as if this was a skull. We'll just finish the nose, just for clarity. So there's gonna be my nose. I've got a whole video on noses, so you can check that one out too. And now we need to establish the mouth. And in order to do that, I'm gonna continue with my skull. I've got a cheekbone that comes just up here just like this, and on this side, just like this. And my mouth is essentially this cylinder in the center here. And so uh, let me draw a line down from my eyes to make sure that I've got it lined up here properly. And it's gonna round around that cylinder. And here's my bottom jaw connecting, looking at the same kind of a face, but looking down, I've got my brow, my eyes, my nose, and my chin. And that ball is probably not gonna be the right size based on how I've drawn these lines here. So I'm gonna end up making some adjustments, I'm sure. And so let me go ahead and draw in my eye sockets. I'm drawing this at a pretty steep angle. My nose is gonna project out like this. And now my mouth is gonna fit right in here and it's gonna have a curve to it because let me draw in my, my skull shape here. And you can see I'm getting a little bit lost with some of my form here and so much of my drawing. Unfortunately, I wish that everything was purely mathematical and I never made these kinds of mistakes, but I do. And so there's always a lot of adjustment and hopefully I can make that just a little bit more clear. Let's clean this up a little bit. So here's my nose. Here's my 
eyes, my eyes will be up in the sockets pretty high because I'm looking down at it. And my mouth fits along the cylinder that represents my jaw right along here. And one other structural concept I really need to get across before we move on, there's the center line. I'm drawing this view again. Uh, here's my brow line here, my nose, my jaw. I'm not measuring any of these. You really do need to get a feel for it and you'll find just like I am having happen with these, you'll end up making adjustments from time to time. I angle my ear back just a little bit from that line. I'm gonna draw a socket for my eye here. My nose is gonna come out here. Here's my cheek line of my skull, and my jaw fits in here. So there we go. And that's all well and good, but where people really start to run into some trouble is when you need to open the mouth. And I think the, the thing that you really need to understand is that your jaw works on a hinge, and I, I can draw a connection right here, and your jaw actually swings from that point. And so if I was to just, let me just draw a point here, and I draw a line here, this would be my mouth. If I wanna open the mouth, what I'm not doing is lowering that line. What I'm doing is I'm swinging from that point. I'm gonna go ahead and erase my lower jaw, and we're gonna swing that back, and we're gonna open the mouth. And so I know that my jaw is gonna swing down and in this way. So let's go ahead and swing this back. And clean things up a little bit just for some clarity here. And there we go, that's the mouth open. And that's how you need to do it properly. You're swinging from a hinge. Obviously you can open much wider than that, but the same rule really applies. And the alternative to doing that is opening the mouth and just dropping the jaw straight down which really is just lengthening this bone artificially. And because this is cartooning, you can really do whatever you want, but it is absolutely incorrect. You really need to bear in mind that you're working from a hinge and that makes everything very, very easy to figure out exactly how the jaw works when you're opening your mouth. And so now that we have some very basic construction and placement figured out, I'm gonna go ahead and start to draw some mouse. And so for this one, we're looking directly at this. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a point right in the center and then in the two sides. And this represents the middle of our mouth and obviously the outside. And so in the center, you have a shape just like this. And then you connect to this point with a bit of a line of beauty. You'll find these all over the place in figure drawing. And there it is right here. And so let's go ahead and do that on the other side, just like this. And then for the bottom, we're gonna do the same kind of a thing. Line of beauty, curving up and then down and into this point, just like this. And now for our bottom lip, it's actually gonna connect into our top lip. And so I've got my point here. I'd also like to, let me just, establish that in there. I'm gonna give, give that a bit of an up-tilted line at the edge there so it's not just coming directly to a point. And my bottom lip is gonna connect right into that. So there you go, very, very simplified mouth, but just enough to get across the shapes that we're gonna be working with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and draw a mouth from the side. So I'm gonna draw a line again. This time we'll only see half the mouth. So we'll see the front here or the middle here, and then we'll see one side. And from here, it's not obvious, but from this side, you can see that the upper lip projects out this way just like this. And this time I'm giving this a bit of a downward curve here. And my bottom lip projects out this way and connects in here. And then my lip above and below connect just like this. And obviously my nose would be here. Hopefully you'll notice that I've projected out my upper lip further forward than my bottom lip. And that's very, very common. Obviously we're all different, but that is generally considered to be a beauty standard to have the upper lip projecting out just a little bit more than the lower lip. Now from a three quarter angle, I'm gonna draw my line again. Now, because I'm drawing this three quarters, my center line, I'm gonna draw here because I see more of this side and this side is a little bit more foreshortened. And because these project out, I'm seeing this from the side. I don't wanna draw this shape flat like this. What I'm seeing is this right here. And so all of my lip is gonna be angled out this way. And then my lower lip will be angled out this way. And so let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna draw my line of beauty, connect it up here. Line of beauty here. And then my lower lip is gonna connect in just like this. And I feel like I got just a little short on one side there. And so there you go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and use my cylinder again. And so here it is. Here's my, my cylinder. And we're gonna be looking down at a mouth. And so it's gonna be curving around this cylinder. I'm gonna draw my center here, one side here, and my other side is wrapping around that cylinder. And hopefully it's more obvious seeing it on the cylinder, why that side would be so much shorter. Also, I know that because my upper lip projects out 
this way and my lower lip projects out this way, my lower lip is going to come out this way and my upper lip is going to come out this way. So it's going to push everything that way. And so while my center line here is here, my center line of the top of my lip will be more like up here. So let's go ahead and draw that in. We'll see very little of that other side. I also forgot to mention that because we're looking down at this, the upper lip we really won't see much of. And I think I went just a little too wide with it there. I really wasn't thinking. And so let me go ahead and narrow that right down. Because you really wouldn't see much of that upper lip at this angle. You would see much more of the lower lip at that angle. And so there we go. So in really, really simple terms, that's how we can start to establish a mouth on a face. I can also do, and I really should, Let's do a cylinder facing the other way so we can look up at the mouth. So I'm gonna draw my mouth along this line here. It's curving around that cylinder. Here's my center line. Here's my closer outside line of the lip and here's the other side right there. And so I'm gonna project out this way. My center line, my center shape will be here. I'll see quite a bit more of the upper lip from this angle and then quite a bit less of my lower lip. And my nose obviously would be just about right here. So there you go. That's how you can really quickly, just with very, very simple shapes, get your mouth established from different angles. And now that we have these simple drawings established, let's go ahead and draw these angles and draw something that's just a little bit more detailed and realistic. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw my center line for my mouth here. Bearing in mind that if this is a face, I've got my center line here, outside here, and I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm not gonna draw using the forms that I did there. I'm just gonna draw my little dip right here, connect that shape here. And I'm just doing a bit of a sketch here just to get my basic shapes established. And all of this stuff generally tends to get shorthanded in my sketch stage. My lower lip here. And there we go, I've got what I had established here, down here, but I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up and we'll do a bit more of a complete drawing. I'm using some line weights. Also, I've got this shape here crossing over in front of this shape, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just lightly. I'm imagining that my lighting would be coming from kind of this angle, which is a really standard angle for me. I'm going very, very thin with my upper line because my light would really be hitting that and I don't want, I don't want to accentuate that line anywhere near as much as, as this line here. My lower lip, again, I want a nice heavy line because I'm using some line weights to establish some very basic and easy lighting. And so there we go. I don't think I lined that up as well as I could. Let's go ahead and fix that. I am gonna go ahead and light this from this direction. And so I'm gonna to start to shadow out here. I don't want to shadow my whole lip. It'll start to get a little bit too dark if I do that. Also, the lip has a lot of uh, texture to it. It has wrinkles. And so I can start to just indicate some of those just like this. Just lightly. I don't want to get too carried away with it, but there you go. My lower lip, there tends to be a bit of a, a ridge right along the bottom here. And so I don't want to just shadow directly from the bottom. I'm going to leave a little bit of a ridge there and start to add in some of my wrinkle detail. They all curve in toward the center. So there we go. I'm going to give it a bit of a, a shadow underneath. Start to establish that. Oops, drawn just a little bit far with my rendering there, with my shadowing. By the way, there's quite a bit of flesh around the mouth. It's something you'll find is very common. When the mouth reaches the face, there will be an inset just about here. And so you'll get a bit of a shadow that hits just like about like that. And so let's go ahead and do that here. cast a shadow here. Since my light's coming from here, I think I'll, I'll go ahead and cast a bit of a shadow from my upper lip here. And there we go. There's a bit more of a detailed mouth without really going into extensive detail about all the shapes that surround the mouth. I really want to focus on just what you need to know to establish the mouth itself for this video. We have enough ground to cover, especially because I really want to cover teeth. So now that we have the basic shapes of our mouth established from a few different angles, the next thing to talk about is opening the mouth, which brings us a few different challenges, not only in the correct way to angle the jaw, but also how to position the lips over an open mouth and how to draw the teeth. I'm gonna go, go ahead and draw a head directly from a profile.
So here we go. I've got a head drawn from the profile. I've got the mouth closed right now. What we need to do first is establish the teeth. So my top row is going to be here. My bottom row is going to be here. And that all seems pretty easy. But once we open the mouth, I'm going to go ahead and hinge my jaw and open my mouth. And you remember how we did this just a little bit earlier on. I'm going to curve it down. And so let's open my mouth pretty wide this time. And I want my mouth to be more like here. All right. So my teeth are going to fit just along these lines like this. Again, pretty easy to figure out. When you see a head from an angle, I'm going to draw my upper jaw like this. My lower jaw is going to be open. And so it's going to be like this. My nose will be here. Just about like this. So that's going to be the curvature of my upper jaw and my lower jaw. I'm obviously really simplifying these forms out quite a bit. My lower jaw is going to curve like this. I'm going to draw a center line through that curves along that shape. So my upper teeth, and this is where people can start to get a little bit confused about how to get the teeth in there. It's very, very simple. Let me clean this up just a little bit and show you just how easy it is for me to start to establish my teeth. I'm going to draw my line for my upper teeth, my line for my lower teeth. And because I have that shape already established, I know exactly where that line is going to go, just like this. And so I also have my center line established, and that is going to be where my two front teeth are going to start. And so let me just go ahead and start to draw my teeth in. So there's my two front teeth, my two upper front teeth, my two lower front teeth. I've got two other ones that sit beside. Then I've got eye teeth. Same thing at the bottom. Teeth are smaller at the bottom. Got my eye tooth here. And now I've got my molars here. Uh, we really don't see too many of these. Honestly, I lose count going back into the back of the mouth and I never worry about it and really neither should you. Even if you're drawing a skull, nobody cares, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't know, maybe people do. I shouldn't say that, but uh, it's just never been, I've never counted them all the way back into the back of the mouth. It's just a fact. So there we go. There's my teeth wrapped around my jaw. And that's really how easily I can make sure to establish them properly on, on the head. But the next thing we need to figure out, and I'm just going to use these drawings right here, is how to make my lips work over my mouth. And unfortunately, there's no completely easy solution to that because I can bare my teeth. And so I can bring my lip all the way up here and all the way down here. So I've really got my teeth bared and I can really see them. My lip obviously extends out past my teeth, just like this. And the center of my mouth is going to be just about in the center center of my lips can be just about the center of my mouth. And so from this side here, let me go ahead and light these teeth down because it's really going to start to interfere. I've got my lip starting here. My mouth only opens so wide. If you remember, here's the center line. And when I open my mouth wide, it actually kind of comes in even just a little bit more narrow because it's being stretched. And because I'm at an angle, I've got this angle here. This angle is going to because I'm turning, I'm seeing the other side curving inwards like this. And it really depends on the angle that you're at. I highly recommend using a mirror in order to get something that is very accurate from the exact angle that you, you want to use. And a mirror is always such a helpful resource. Now here's my upper lip. I'm going to use that same shape that we were talking about earlier. And that's going to be right here. And now my lower lip is going to be here. It's going to be pretty thin because I've got it stretched out and it's going to stretch basically to nothing here. The other thing to really bear in mind, when you stretch your mouth that far, it tends to pull at your nose. And so you get stretch lines coming down from your nose just like this. And so there they are. That's the basic mechanics of how we draw the teeth in, how we open the jaw, and how we can get the lips over the mouth. So I said a minute ago that the mouth doesn't need to be open over the teeth like that. I could also, and let's just go ahead and I'm going to draw another head. Let's draw it from, from a three quarter looking the other way. All right, so I'm going to draw, this is my cylinder of, of my jaw here, my upper jaw. I'm going to open it, and so I've got a hinge coming back here. I know I want to curve it down this way, and so let's go ahead and open that. Just like that, and there's my jaw open. I'm not going to bother to draw the teeth this time. I'm just going to go ahead and put a line in, and I think that might be a bit of a short distance, so let's make this just a little bit longer. I think I was too short there. So just about like this. And this again is where you really do have to be willing to make adjustments all the time when you can see that something is uh, not quite right. So there we go. I've got my basic shapes drawn in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw in my lips. And this time I don't want to really expose my teeth. I'm going to go much more for an, a pushed out lip. And so even though my jaw is open very wide, my lips are still, my lips are only open so wide. I'll only see a little bit of this upper lip from this angle. 
and more of my lower lip. But my lower lip still should be fairly stretched out. Whenever you open the mouth, it always stretches your lips. And there's my teeth. So I would see some of my bottom molars on that side. I'd see my top teeth. Here's, here's my divisions. And there you go. That's my mouth open. That's just a quick example of, of how you can open the mouth, but change the way that the lips are shaped. There is one more very, very good example of this. And this time we're gonna draw something a little bit more like Joker. And so we've got our mouth open. We're gonna have our mouth open and we're gonna give him a big smile. And so it's gonna take this and it's gonna alter the shape of the lips. I'm gonna go ahead and hinge my jaw down again this way and so let's open the mouth and just drawing lines through like this is a really big aid for doing that you can see how that really helped right there just curving them in and connecting it up like this my bottom jaw is hinging from here make sure to get some space in there for my teeth you can see the other side of the jaw here I went a little wide with my jaw and let's go ahead and fix that So for this face, I want him to be smiling. And, and really in that case, you just lift the corners of the mouth up. I think that's pretty apparent. I don't want to lift them up past my center line. It would look completely strange. So they really should still be actually curved downward, just like this. But you can see if I keep it relatively flat and aligned with the line of my jaw there, that really ends up looking like a smile very, very easily. This is a very large smile. I think larger than a normal person would ever be able to smile. And I think I've got a little bit too carried away with the side, even for the Joker. Let's go ahead and fix that. Because my mouth really should line up with my eyes and so I went way too wide you can do that uh, for some characters and it really works and it's necessary to mess with all of these different proportions to make some characters work but it's something to really bear in mind just for generalized proportions you really don't want to get too far away from those basic guideposts and landmarks so there's my basic smile now something to bear in mind is I'm drawing my jowl coming down from my nose with a smile that line is really lifting up like this and what that does is it takes your cheek and really brings that out you end up with a, a cheek that really pushes out here also to really sell that. I've gone maybe a little bit too carried away. Let's go ahead and fix that. And we'll stretch out down here. And so there we go. There's a basic smile. Obviously, there's no detail to this. And it still looks a little bit flat. But something also to bear in mind, I'm going to go ahead and just draw the teeth in here quickly. Just so you can see, I've got my teeth established. I know exactly where the line is for them. So I can really just, along that, establish my teeth very easily. And I'd see some of my upper teeth here and for my lower teeth. So now that we are talking about teeth, let's really kind of go into teeth just a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and just draw an open mouth. Here's my upper lip connecting to my lower lip here. I've got my upper teeth here. I'm going to just draw them as a flat line and my lower teeth here. And again, don't try and draw each individual tooth. Just draw the basic plane that they sit in, just like this. At the angle that I've drawn, that lip is coming out too far. And I think that's going to look a little better. So I'm going to lighten this down, and I'm going to start to draw in my teeth. The first thing to bear in mind is your teeth all kind of, from a front view, your teeth don't go straight up and down. You would end up with a jaw that ends up looking very robotic. What they do, I'm going to draw, here's my upper, this way, where my teeth connect, my lower, they do this. They come in toward each other. The center obviously is the center. So I'm gonna draw a triangle for my gums at the top of the center here and the center for my bottom. And I'm just gonna draw some gums. Something I really want to do is I'm gonna curve this line slightly, slightly this way, and then this one slightly this way. And I'm gonna keep doing that. What that's doing is it's giving my gums some dimension. So if I draw a tooth and I draw my gum kind of sitting over that tooth because the tooth is inset in that gum and then I draw the next gum here you can see the angle of my tooth coming out and the gum hitting it is creating that kind of a shape just like that so curve outward and then inward and as I go toward the outside I'm getting much more narrow because I'm rounding around a cylinder so I'm going to do the same thing the other side another thing that I, I, I probably have too much room for my bottom teeth here the upper teeth are a little larger than the bottom. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and connect some teeth. I'm not drawing my teeth all the way through though. That starts to look very, 
uh, very overdone. And I don't want them to all be completely even. So there's my upper teeth. My lower teeth are way too big. I really shouldn't have sized them the same. So let's go ahead and fix that. So there you go. There's some basic teeth done pretty simply. They come in toward each other from the top and the bottom. They're not directly flat, just like this. And they inside into the gums, which gives you this kind of a shaping to the line. I don't know that I was perfect with that. I could always clean that up but that's basically the, the idea. And it really gives you a lot of dimension very, very simply and without having to overthink things too much. And so let's go ahead and start with my top teeth here. My center line is gonna be right here. So I know that my two front teeth, and I always just go ahead and start with those, are gonna be here. And I could draw the whole teeth, but I don't find that's really all that effective. It really is way too overdone drawing through all of your teeth. You're much better off to draw them as a bit of a shape, but you need to have teeth in there. So I, I know where my the tops of my teeth are, and I'm gonna connect the bottom with that in mind. Eye teeth, obviously, a little more pointy. Drawing my molars there. And then we go correct that just a little bit. I feel like I got a little bit strange. So let's just fix that. Now for my bottom teeth. And I'm drawing them coming in toward each other. <laughs> that molar got a little carried away. Let's go ahead and see if we can make that a little bit more. So I'm kind of drawing the tops of my molars here. And I can see the inside connections of these teeth here. Uh, something that I don't do very often, because generally speaking, I'll have my tongue. And I still feel like that lip is extending too far out. I'm going to fix it again. So in a really simple way, that's how I approach uh, my teeth. And so now I'm going to go ahead and take everything we've learned so far and try and put it together into drawing a few mouths that are a little bit more complete, really in more of a comic book style. Here's my basic head shape. I've got my mouth area just kind of sketched in. I've got my lines of the face drawn in. You can see that I've gone actually quite a bit larger with my uh, chin than this area here. And the reason for that is I want to have the mouth open just a little bit. And so uh, just in drawing my basic head construction, I, I kept that in mind. So I'm going to start with the center of my eyes. This is really going to represent where my mouth goes and that's going to be just about here i'm going to open the mouth just a little bit and so my upper lip when i open points down just a little and my lower lip is going to be just about here so there's going to be generally my mouth i've got all the same forms that we were using before and i'm kind of roughly sketching them in right now my teeth are just going to be about through here we'll see them there in just a little bit and my nose is going to be just about here and so let me go ahead and lighten that down. I'm going to ignore most of that head and I'm just going to leave it lightened down. I think it's important for these examples to draw the head and then place the mouth on the head, but we're going to focus on the mouth. And so I've got my center part here. And if you remember, I drew a, a shape basically like this down the center. And I'm not going to go ahead and draw all of that in. What I'm going to do is indicate it and I'm going to overlap some shapes. So this is this part of the lip here, this part of the lip here. And when I look at it from a bit of the side, I'm getting an overlap like this. Hopefully that all makes sense. And so that's kind of what I have here. My lip is going to curve down much more sharply on this side because I'm looking at the face slightly from the side than on this side where we'll see just a little more of it. I'm going to indicate my upper lip. This is the whole thing is my upper lip, but the, the line that would represent the top of my lip just here. I want to go very thin with it and not get too carried away because the light is really hitting that. And uh, it's very easy to break the illusion if you have heavy lines where your light is. And so my bottom lip, I'm just going to go ahead and open it. I'm going to give it a bit of a, a curve just like this. I don't want to just open it and have my line be like that. It'd be very, very boring. So what I'm doing is curving it this way, then bringing it this way and then curving it this way. There are different options you can take, but I like to give my line just a little bit more character and you can see it looks much more natural doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and just give this a bit of an overlap here again, and I can do that here too, just a little bit. And that just gives it a little bit of uh, dimension and space. I can go much heavier with this line here because this is gonna be shadowed underneath. And now for my teeth, I'm gonna draw out my top teeth here. My bottom teeth are gonna be here. So I'm gonna have a bit of a shadow between them. And I don't wanna to get too carried away with detail. So I'm not gonna draw anything in the center here because the mouth is fairly small and getting too much detail in the teeth can start to look a little distracting. But what I am gonna do is draw the teeth where they're going out toward in shadow. And they start pretty narrow here. A little indication there, a little here, just a little bit more here. And you can see how not drawing everything in the center kind of shines a bit of a light on it. And I can indicate a lot of the teeth just by slightly sculpting that line there. I think I even got a little carried away there. 
just like that. This is a pretty small mouth. I, I want to do a few examples here to show you some of how I'm, I'm shorthanding some of this stuff. So I've got my nose here. Let's go ahead and draw my nostril. My other nostril is going to be just about here. We'll cast a bit of a shadow. This way, this is really my standard kind of tutorial lighting and something that I use all the time anyway, just in my actual work, probably more than I should. I've got a bit of a septum here, if that's the right word for it, but there it is right there. And I don't want to get too carried away with the, the lighting around my mouth. It can start to really overpower. And for our next example, we're going to do something just a little bit more from the side and let's do a female mouth. Really, the actual technique is the same, but the way you define it is just a little different. And so we'll go into that. So here's my brow, here's my nose, here's my chin. We're gonna keep this mouth closed. My eyes are gonna go just about in here. And so my nose is gonna insert just here. My chin will be just about here. And now we can kind of insert our mouth into this area. And so I'm gonna draw a line down from my eye and from my other eye. And this is gonna be about the space that my mouth takes up. And I also wanna bear in mind where my center is, which is gonna be just about here. And so I'm gonna follow my curve just a little bit. So my mouth will be just about here. I'm gonna start by defining in my nose. And I won't draw in the eyes, but I will just go ahead and get my general face shape in here. So there we go, that should be enough. So I'm gonna start with the center again, just off of here. I'm gonna project that center little shape out this way. I'm gonna overlap here and here. And so the mouth actually projects out from the nose, but that's because while this part is flush, it comes out this way and this way. So that's where you get kind of that projection. So I want to bear that in mind. And uh, if I get this a little bit lined up wrong, which can happen, I'll just have to make some adjustments. Because my lip, this on this example here, this is a little bit shorter. Well, in this one, it really kind of curves all the way right back in. So we only see that because it's foreshortened all the way away from where we can see. And I am actually defining a little bit more of my upper lip here than I did the first time. Uh, I'm a little messy with that line, unfortunately, and I've got a broke my pencil here. But uh, because this is a, a female mouth, now what I'm doing is essentially outlining the mouth to make it more pronounced. And that really would be kind of the effect of lipstick. Obviously, not all women wear lipstick, but for cartooning, it really does kind of help to differentiate. And for my bottom lip, it's going to attach and come out just like this. And so I want to attach it here and here. And I'm not drawing this out to a point here because it's curving back in around. So there we go. I'm going to give this a little bit of shadow as it curves away just under here, a little shadow under this lip here. I don't want to get too carried away with this again. And I don't want to accentuate there. There can be a, a pretty heavy buildup of shadow in this area. And let's do one of those in just a minute. But for this one, I don't want to accentuate that too much. As a matter of fact, I think that's already too much. Let's go ahead and lighten that down and see if I can take some emphasis off of that. So there we go, got it attached here. Draw some of my uh, septum here. And I can put a little cast shadow here. I can even bring in a bunch of shadow around the mouth here. This would be a shadow from the nose, the side of the cheek. Obviously, shadow can have a, a pretty drastic effect on, on the way that your picture is perceived. So you really want to put some thought into that before you start building up a lot of shadow around the mouth. But that is going to be a bit more of a fully three-quarter angle, maybe a little bit more than three-quarters. For my next example, I'm going to draw a face directly from the front, and we're going to do something very heavily shadowed. And I want to show you some of the ways that, and some of the landmarks that I use to build up shadow around the mouth to get something that's a little bit more dramatic. And this is going to be something a little bit more like Punisher, or maybe a bit more of an aggressive kind of a character. Drawing my eye sockets, my nose. I felt like I was just a little bit long here, so really I should probably be here with that line my mouth is going to be just here. And it's going to have a curve, again, because I'm looking down at it. Not too much of a curve, but it's something to bear in mind. My curve rounds up pretty steeply once we get to the side of the head, which is why my ears are quite a bit higher than my eye line. And so my mouth is going to line up just about here. That's kind of the center of my eyes. And let's go ahead and lighten this down. I highly recommend that you look at your work in a mirror when you do, especially faces that you're looking directly on like this. Hopefully this is pretty well lined up and I don't have a skew, but that 
is very, very common. It happens to me all the time. So I recommend when you're doing something like this or really anything to hold up a mirror, look at your picture in a mirror and you'll see a lot of distortions that you might otherwise miss. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the nose again, just the bottom of the nose. And for my mouth, my center is gonna be about here. I'm curving up with it, but I really want to avoid making it look like a smile. This is gonna be a very serious kind of a mouth. So I'm curving down toward the outside and I'm trying to be very careful with that. I also know that I'm gonna be shadowing around this mouth quite a bit to kind of help me with that. I find it's very difficult for me to avoid drawing a smile at this angle. It's something I end up kind of battling when I'm drawing. So here's my basic form. just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and shadow this one directly downward so it's shadow from the nose, just like this. This shadow is gonna certainly cover my upper lip here. I'm gonna just shadow this whole thing. This is gonna be much more seriously shadowed. Really nice big heavy shadow under my lip here. Let's just draw that as a rectangle for right now, just to kind of get that established. I'm gonna continue my shadow from my nose over my lower lip. And now the corners of my mouth, we're gonna go ahead and really accentuate that. I really wanna bias that toward the, the lower lip though and not lift it, otherwise that'll really start to make it look like a smile. And so I've got that basically established like that. I'm gonna connect that up. As a matter of fact, let's just go fully dark here. And so there's my mouth basically uh, drawn. But in order to make this really work, I need to start working on the shadows for the rest of the face. So I've got a heavy shadow underneath my cheek here and on the other side. I'm going a little bit graphic with this, but when you get really heavy with shadow, it can start to just become, just by its nature, pretty graphic. I'm gonna heavily shadow my uh, jaw. And hopefully I'm fairly lined up still and not too skewed. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and shadow under here too and connect here, just like this. And a bunch of shadow over my chin. And I'm kind of constructing shadow all around this whole area. There are uh, head models that you can find that really define all of the shadow or all of the planes of the face. I'm really not going into that here. And those can be helpful. The truth is though, that I have learned all of this from uh, observation and this kind of study drawing and from uh, doing that from other comic artists. And I'm gonna show you something about that in just a minute once we're finished with this. I really wanna give you a strategy for how you can start to really develop your mouths and really everything else beyond just a, sim a simple constructive stage because there is truly only so much that I can get across by just showing you the basic construction. It is fairly simple, but a mouth has so much character and can be defined in so many different ways. And the only way to really truly learn that without me drawing a million examples here is to look at the examples that really already exist out there and copy them. So there we go, pretty graphic, but I'm using kind of the planes of my face, by which I mean, so here's my upper brow here, and this would be a plane that slightly points upward. I've got a plane here for my forehead, and then a plane here, and maybe I guess another one here. Uh, you can define, you can divide this into a million planes. Here's a plane for the side of my head here. Uh, we'll just draw the eye sockets as one simple downward plane. I've got a downward shaped plane here. And there are so many planes. I, here's a plane for my nose like this and a side plane. And it is important to learn all these. And I do recommend that you look into this and, and give this a bit of a study. But so much of this you'll learn just from copying the work of other people to really learn how all these planes really work because these kinds of studies really pale in, pale in comparison to what you can get from life and pale in comparison to what you can get from artists that have been interpreting life and growing based on other artists' interpretation of life for years. There we go, there's that one. So before we wrap this one up, I wanna show you one of my favorite books for drawing a lot of things, but Mouths is a real example. And every page of this book, this is all artwork by Kevin Nolan. And every page of this example, or of this book has incredibly drawn mouse. And you have to know that Kevin Nolan, while I'm sure he looked at life, he looked at a lot of different comic artists. And this is the accumulated knowledge of centuries of, of illustration. And this is why it's so important for you to do studies based on other artists. I can explain the basic planes and how to approach some of this stuff but to really make it your own and to really understand it, you need to do it. And you cannot learn in a bubble. So you really need to do these kinds of studies. And you can see how this mouth here, if you can do that well, 
would really translate to something like this. And understanding how the teeth kind of work and how to simplify them will really help you understand how this is approached here. If you're drawing from life, you really have to do quite a bit more work in order to decide what lines you want to keep and what you want to lose and what you want to define. Uh, life is such a great reference, but for simplifying for comic art or really for any kind of illustration that is line-based, it's very, very helpful to have an incredibly good artist like Kevin Nolan uh, to help you with some of those kinds of decisions. Here's a really nicely defined mouth with some of the kinds of shadow that I did. This is a bit more of a sidelight, but this is so influential for me. And I learned looking at this kind of work and you really absolutely need to do it. It's an essential step uh, in your development. Another artist I really want to show you quickly is Greg Capullo. And he's got a more cartoony style, certainly, than um, than Kevin Nolan. But you can see he's so good at drawing teeth. And the way to be able to do teeth well is to do it. And I really recommend you look at an artist that really can pull it off well, like, like Greg Capullo. Uh, it's a great mouth here. Very, very expressive, too. And that's something we really didn't cover here at all, is the kind of range of expressions. He's very good at really simply defining, especially at small sizes like this, these kinds of mouths from different angles. He does that very, very well. These lips are so beautifully defined. It's an incredible mouth, and I really recommend that you go through, and it doesn't have to be these artists, obviously. It can be whatever artist you want, but find somebody that you think does it really well, and do a lot of studies, and you will learn so much. I think it's very helpful to have a good understanding of some of the underlying structure, but then the next step, and to really develop your your own work, is to do the kind of study of, of uh, work that's, that's already out there. You really can't get that from life. You can get that kind of an expression from life, but that definition in the way that he approaches it there, you need to learn from other artists. And I really recommend, and I hope that you will follow that advice. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to tune in. Generally Thursdays, I've got a lot of great artists lined up for live streams. We'll be painting, we'll be drawing, we'll be talking about artists' careers, their tools, and their process. That's coming up almost weekly on my YouTube channel, and I'll have more tutorials to follow.